heard the term doppelganger until I saw a show called How I Met Your Mother. I know that's a useless fact, but it kind of reminds me of this episode a little bit. But anyway, welcome to the St. Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. I'm your host, Will Santana, and... I'm Mike Russo, and this episode smells like rotten possum gizzards. Ew, that sounds disgusting. (laughs) I'm just going to say it up front, well... Mm -hmm. I love Darkwing Duck very much, my all-time favorite TV show, mm-hmm. but I also call things like I see them, Uh-oh. and this episode is not very good. No, it's not, man. Uh, for those who don't know, well, actually, nobody knows except Mike. I fell asleep <laughs> twice watching this episode, man. This is not a good one. This one is rough. Yeah, it's, it's very rough, but um, Mike, everything going okay with you on your end? How's the family doing, man? We're all good. We're all good. Um, so you know, we are. We finally booked our Disney trip for April. I wanna go. I wanna go. Pick me. Pick me. Yeah, this should be fun. It's it's part of a larger Florida trip. It's not all gonna be Disney, of course. We're we'll <laughs> gonna see some family. Gonna you know have Easter down in Florida, but mm-hmm. we're gonna spend a few days at Disney. Um, we booked we booked one of the value resorts. Um, we booked the All Star Movie Resort. Okay. Um, yeah, it's nothing fancy. I haven't been there. You know, I've been to the better ones, but you know, for cost effectiveness, we're not going to spend much time there anyway. So, you know, for somewhere you're going to, you know, maybe just sleep, have breakfast and go in the pool. It's going to do its job. And we're planning on going to the Magic Kingdom a couple of days. And we're going to go to Epcot once where my daughter really wants to, um, have breakfast with the Wooden the Pooh character. So we're going to do that. <laughs> we're gonna try to get to the beast castle we'll see if that can happen because we have a dining plan um no hollywood fun- studios no uh, animal kingdom no we only have so much time and okay. there's there's so much to do with the magic kingdom we gotta do two days there that's oh. our favorite park yeah, and it I can't know be that- done in one day it, it can't and i know there's like <laughs> a um a flower and garden or a wine and garden festival or something at Epcot that month. And my mm-hmm. wife really wants to go to. So we're definitely going to do that. Don't have time for anything else though. What else y'all going to see in uh, Florida or are y'all stopping in other cities on the way? Are y'all driving down there or flying? Yes. We're driving down there. We've never done that before. Okay. Um, so, you know, first time for everything we're driving down because flights are expensive for three people. Mm-hmm. So road trip, that should be okay. fun. Okay. Um, but we're going to stay with family. And okay. we're going to do some, you know, touristy stuff. We're probably going to hit some um, some miniature golf places. Uh, we're not quite sure yet. Okay, so you'll be driving through Georgia, but unfortunately you'll be on the opposite side of me when you drive through Georgia because you'll be going down 95 South. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Hopefully uh, it won't take us too long. Okay, okay. Uh, anything else you got planned out, uh, out in Orlando to see? Um, just family. I want to see my grandmother. She moved down there a few years ago. Um, she's in a, you know, she's in an assisted living facility now. So we, she Mm -hmm. hasn't seen her uh, great granddaughter in a while. So we want to go see her and, um, just spend a little bit of time with family. Like I said, we're going to be there for Easter. So that'll be nice. Okay. And you know, Disney's just the icing on the cake. So it should be good. Yeah. Make sure you give us an update, man, when you get back. Oh, I plan to definitely. All right, guys. Well, we're going to do a little something different today. We, you know, I wanted to start off with the shout outs before instead of waiting to the end of the episode. So my shout outs for this episode, I'm going to give three, Mike. I'm feeling generous today. All right. Go for it. All right. I'm going to give one to Daniel Wickwire. He's been very active on our group. Um, he doesn't just like he also comments quite often, too. Uh, I also want to give one to Jamie Reader. Oh, my God. Y'all be killing me with these last names, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it's Reader, uh, but the reason why I want to give Reader a shout out is because uh, he or she, they comment a lot both on our uh, Facebook page and Instagram. So shout out to Reader. Good. Yeah. And then uh, my third one, I had it here. Uh, let's see. I had it here. Where is it at? Where, oh, here we go. I want to give a shout, our third shout out to Jordan Twining or Twining. God, y'all be killing me. <laughs> Dude, me and Jordan go way back. Oh, really? He's a buddy of mine, a Godzilla collecting buddy. I have known him for quite a while. We've gone to conventions together. Um, he's part of a large group of friends I have that are into Godzilla. Um, okay. So, yeah, so I'll say hi to Jordan here. Thank you, Jordan, for following us. I know you like Darkwing Duck, too. 
And um, also, Dan, the first one you mentioned is also a Godzilla collecting buddy of mine. Oh, my God. Y'all killing me with this Godzilla. So both, <laughs> of the, so both of them came over from the Godzilla hobby. And they like Darkwing Duck, too. Okay. But I, I've known both of them for a while. So hi, Jordan. Hi, Dan. Well, you know what? Just because you did that, oh, my God. I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot. I'm going to give one more shout out. Leslie Street. <laughs> shout out, Leslie Street. I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know her, but I saw she mentioned Godzilla too, man. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah, that was cool. I saw I saw that she mentioned that today. Uh, we're, today is the um, January twenty second. If anyone's keeping score, so uh, yeah, she mentioned that today on one of our posts. So hi, Leslie. Thank you for mentioning that. But um, <laughs> let's get away from Godzilla and start trying to talk about this episode. Okay, but before we get into the episode, Mike, I, this is the last thing I wanted to switch up. Can you tell our listeners for the who are listening for the first time, where can they listen to us at? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, so we are on Stitcher and Spotify and Google Play, Apple devices. We are on Pocket Cast. We are on Radio Publix. We are on a whole bunch of apps that are way too numerous for me to name. Like a new <laughs> one pops up every week. We are also <laughs> on YouTube. Um, we are we are also on Amazon Echo. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on Pandora. We are on everything. We are super easy to find. So you did good, I think. This this spiel gets longer every time I do it. <laughs> and it's gonna seem like it's gonna keep getting longer. <laughs> Remember when it was just like three or four things I had to say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So man. yeah, we haven't actually named the episode yet. Yeah, it's double dark wings. Double dark wings. Yep. And uh, so let's just let's just go and talk about this episode. All right. Well, so Mike, give us our air date and production order, man. All right. This was the last episode of the fourth week of Darkwing shows, right before the rerun started. Okay. So Friday, October fourth, nineteen ninety one, and it would take a really great episode to follow up the Justice Ducks, and unfortunately, this isn't it. Um, it's 16th in production order, mm -hmm. which it's also the very last Jambalaya Jake episode. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> nobody likes Jambalaya Jake. Let's just be <laughs> honest about that. And it's funny, in production order, this one follows Duck Blind and Beauty and the Beat. So they were dropping a quote-unquote reoccurring villain just as they were introducing the supervillains. So we hardly knew you, Jambalaya Jake, but... I'm fine. I'm fine yeah. with them. I'm fine with this being the last Jambalaya episode. Me too. Um, <laughs> so our story editor was Bruce Talkington. I know we did talk about him a few times. Mm -hmm. We have a new writer. Oh, okay. Uh, the his writer's name was Dean Steffen. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote only two other Darkwing episodes. He co-wrote Bad Tidings, which is another lesser one. I'll be completely honest about that mm -hmm. he also wrote calm a chameleon which i do really like yeah i like that one too so he definitely he, this one's not so good double dark wings but i do like calm a chameleon so you know that's great he um was born in 52 i just discovered he passed away in 2018 so just two oh. years ago at 65 so rest in peace dean stefan um his earliest work was in the late 80s Shows like Fantastic Max and Dun Dun Dun, the Smurfs. Oh my goodness. Everybody was, <laughs> everyone from voice actors to writers, they were all worked on the Smurfs. Um, <laughs> worked on a bunch of uh, Disney shows, Tailspin, Goof Troop, Bonkers, Quack Pack, lots and lots of non-Disney stuff. At this point, it's the same story for a lot of these writers and voice actors. He was working up to the time of his death. Mm -hmm. His last credit... <laughs> was a direct-to-video sequel to that terrible movie, Norma the North. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No, i never heard of that. But it'd be the, it'd be the last thing I'd want on my resume. Um, it's not really, it didn't really go out on, on a high note, but he wrote some good stuff. I'll give him that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Dean Steffen. And animation-wise, we have um, Hanho Huangup returning. Mm -hmm. Remember them from um, Dirty Money? Yep. Well, you didn't like that episode very much, and they're back for this one. So um, <laughs> I liked them in Dirty Money, but they're kind of boring in this one. They don't really do anything all that special in this episode. They start okay, and after a little bit, their animation gets really sloppy. There was one scene that I, I really did like the animation on, and when we get to that part, I'll, I'll mention why. Okay. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, Hanho had a really specific way of drawing Darkwing that I'm used to. Um, the very specific way of drawing his beak and his face. So it, it, it's possible to tell it's them. But mm-hmm. like I said in Dirty Money, they didn't do a lot of episodes at first. We're actually not going to see them until Quack of Ages, mm-hmm. which drops, I think, like six, seven months from now. Oh, wow. So we so got a while. We're not going to see this studio again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So those are our um, basics. Those are specific. So let's get into the plot. Take All it. Start, right. from, start Will. All right, so we start off. I was kind of a little unsure what was going on with the way it started. It, we see Jambalaya and Gum uh, on top of Gumbo, and they're like creeping to uh, Granny's cabin. Were they in the swamp? Yes. They in the, okay, so they weren't in Saint Canard, were they? No, they weren't in Saint Canard. Okay, so yeah, they're they're creeping into Granny's cabin. Uh, they pop up in there, and then uh, Granny asks, did, "Did you get her toads?" <laughs> mm-hmm. And Granny, Granny Whammy, her full name, she was voiced by a woman named Billy Hayes, who was born in 1932. She's still with us. Oh. Her earliest acting role was in 1959, and she was, I think she's most famous for appearing as uh, villains in Sid and Marty Croft shows like H.R. Puffin Stuff and Lidsville. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of those shows. No. Uh, 19, I think there's 1960s and 70s stuff. Um her first animated role was in 81, like everybody, lots of Warner, uh, Hanna-Barbera stuff, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, almost all of her roles, if you look at her IMDb, never any major characters. All her entries are just old lady or old woman. <laughs> and, she, was that, uh, she has that voice for it, though. <laughs> yeah, and Granny Whammy is definitely an old lady. Oh, yeah. So she's a Jambalaya Jake's grandmother. Yeah, so, well, Granny's asking about the toads, and Jake has them. He has them all in the bag. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Uh, go for it. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, uh, but he smells something in the background. (laughs) Yeah, he he smells something that smells like rotten possum gizzards. (laughs) She says it is. (laughs) Yeah, well, he thinks it's the hex potion she's making for him, but that's not the hex potion. That's her dinner. Yeah. (laughs) So what she's doing for Jake is... He's she's making a hex potion for him so he can he can basically get even with Darkwing Duck. Yeah, we even see a like a like a glyph of Darkwing, you know, from the from the smoke of the of the hex. Yeah, you see his face in the smoke of the hex potion. Mm-hmm. But the uh, potion comes with a price. Oh yeah, ten thousand dollars, man. And what happens if Jake can't get her ten thousand dollars? Uh, she's gonna uh make a potion out of gumbo. <laughs> Yup, and Gumbo doesn't want that. No, he definitely doesn't want that. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Uh, that scene ends. Jake and Gumbo leave, and yeah. then it's time to meet Darkwing. Yeah, we episode. got we got Darkwing, but we got a different launch pad. He's he's dressed up. Yeah, so let me set this up. So launch pad is Darkwing decoy, <laughs> uh, wearing Darkwing's outfit, not the mask though. For some reason, he's not wearing the mask. And um, so Darkwing Decoy, that's something that goes all the way back to the original pitch reel for Double O Duck. Mm-hmm. That was going to be something they did often on that sh- on that version of the show. It was going to be Double O Decoy. So Launchpad would wear the, the Double O Duck outfit. And they show this. It's funny. They show a, um, a drawing. I think it might have been done by Mike Peraza. I'm not sure. For this pitch reel of Darkwing and Launchpad. Oh, let me... No, no. Double O Duck in launch pad, mm-hmm. hiding in garbage cans at gunpoint. And Darkwing's Double O Duck, I'm sorry, is pointing at launch pad as if to say, no, no, he's Double O Duck. Shoot him. <laughs> and um, I kind of get why they didn't really go on with this because I don't like the idea of launch pad being a decoy. Yeah, I don't either. Like, that's, 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 kind, of character. In, that's kind of insulting the launch pad. Like, mm-hmm. he's the sidekick. Yeah. Like, he shouldn't be a decoy. <laughs> and it just, it seems, it seems almost cruel. The joke in the pitch reel is funny. Don't shoot me, shoot him. But mm-hmm. you don't do that to Launchpad. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I mean, there was a great joke on Tiny Toons, not to digress for too much, when they had Plucky being Bat Duck. Mm-hmm. And Hampton Pig was Robin, but he was... Uh, his name was Decoy, 
and he was the bad, basically the sidekick who you you know you'd held hostage. He had a big uh, target on his stomach. Mm-hmm. That's that's funny, but it's like not with Launchpad. I yeah. don't. I and they only did it twice. And the other episode they do it with should have aired already, but it was delayed. So it was something that they didn't really that didn't really last very long. They stopped doing right away, and I'm totally glad for it. So <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, Launchpad is Darkwing Decoy, and he's trying to teach him how to be a hero. Yeah, but and, he wants to teach him something in particular, the double reverse paddle drop boom boom kick. Hey, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You said it. Can Launchpad do it? Oh, no. He, didn't he get stuck up in a water tower or something? Yeah, his foot gets stuck up in a water tower, <laughs> and all the water comes crashing down on them. And then, and then later on... Darkwing actually gives Launchpad the gas gun to try to fire. Yeah, they were now. Oh, this is the you talking about when they're in the alley, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. now this is the scene I wanted to talk about uh, uh, for the animation. I love how they're in the in the alley, and you can see the light, um, the street light or whatever, the building light behind them. So the back of them is like really shiny and spotlight, but the front of them is dark shadow because of the building in front of them. So yeah, I, I I liked how they were so detailed on that scene. No, I did say the animation starts off pretty strong. Mm-hmm. So this is probably the best it looks in this episode. You're right. The shadows are really nice and the and the, the backgrounds and the layouts. This scene is pretty cool. Yeah. So Darkwing gives Launchpad the gas gun with the grappling hook in it. Launchpad fires it. The grappling hook hits Darkwing on the head, you know. Launch- <laughs> and um, Launchpad mentions um, Hamburger Hippo. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to have Hamburger Hippo on his launch pad. Yeah, you know, where else would you go? <laughs> so, um, and now we get, I think, what this episode is most infamous for. I don't know if all of our listeners know, but there were two completely different scenes that were animated for the sequence where Jambalaya, Jake, and Gumbo try to get Darkwing's attention. Mm-hmm. Completely different scenes. Some of the dialogue and action is the same, but the setting and the trap they set are both different. Um, when this episode originally aired, the way I first saw it in 1991, Jambalaya, Jake, and Gumbo climbed to the top of a high-tension tower. And Jake asks Gumbo to bite into the wires. And Jumbo, of course, I mean, Gumbo won't do it. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, why would I? But, you know, Jake reminds him, you know, what Granny's going to do if he doesn't if he doesn't help. So Gumbo bites into the wires and costs a power outage in St. Canard. And the, and Hexing Launchpad takes place on top of the tower. Mm-hmm. And um, for whatever reason, I think it was because a character was biting into a power line. It's, you know, probably behavior a kid could imitate. I don't yeah. know how, but it could. Um, they reanimated it. So mm-hmm. all versions that have aired in reruns, that are on DVD, that are on Disney Plus, have this completely different sequence where instead they're at the phone company and Jake mixes up this super hot concoction and pours it into a telephone. Which doesn't I mean, make sense. <laughs> this doesn't make sense at all. I feel like this was... I feel like the sequence was super rushed because it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And the concoction travels through the wires and causes a phone booth to fly up in the air. And that catches Darkwing's attention. Mm-hmm. It is honestly, Will, it's the oddest damn thing. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't. But, you know, back to what you were saying that, you know, they probably didn't want kids doing it. It kind of this is around the same time that movie The Program came out. Um, I know you're not into sports. But the movie, the program was a football movie, and there's a scene where these football players, they go to this bar and they drink, and it was after a football game. And one guy says, I need to go release stress. And what he does is he goes lay in the middle of the streets and let the cars drive over him. Of course, they don't hit him. And then the whole team started – yeah, then the whole team started lining up, and then all the cars would drive over like five or six players like in in a major road. And it was crazy. And it was like, of course, in the movie, they didn't get hit or anything. But then some kids actually tried this and it was all over the news. So they cut that scene out. 
is completely out of the movie now. I, I have never seen it on YouTube. I've never seen it uh, anywhere. It just does not exist. Like I remember seeing it in the movie theater, and then there was a big deal on the news about it, and that scene had just never existed again. I'm trying to think of other examples of cartoons where they did that. The only one that jumps into my head was a Simpsons episode mm -hmm. where Bart's trying to get find a way to get out of a test. And the t Mrs. Krabappel, the teacher, reminds him of the time he faked having Tourette's. Mm -hmm. And Bart pretends to have Tourette's. And somebody must have complained because it's a real disease. And they changed it to rabies. Mm-hmm. So, but this is a whole five minute sequence. They had to completely change. Yeah, it definitely seemed like it was rushed because it just didn't make sense, man. When I was watching it, I'm like, that, that really doesn't make sense putting that uh, hex into the telephone. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, long story short, in both versions, Launchpad shows up, Jake hexes him, and then runs off before Darkwin can see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Darkwin shows up and he sees Launchpad basically fighting with nobody. And says, you know, come on, whatever happened, you know, they're gone now, let's go, and they leave. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the dialogue and action is the same, but, like, the setting and the actual trap is different. But whatever, I think that's the most notable thing about this episode. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, that, that's that. And um, so they go back to the house. Yeah, and LP's struggling, though. He, he's struggling to stay awake. He's still in the Darkwing outfit. Yeah, launch pad's exhausted. Yeah, and this is the but only time we see Drake in this episode. He comes down the stairs brushing his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, he, you know, he's, and launch pad's so tired he doesn't take off the outfit. Mm -hmm. The Darkwing outfit, which I guess he has to, you know, because the hex is on the outfit. Yeah. So Jambalaya, you know, activates the hex and launch pad becomes a zombie. <laughs> yeah, he shows up in the sewer. Mm -hmm. Shows up right in the sewer, and Jake figures it out right away that it's not Darkwing. He can yeah. tell by scent. Mm -hmm. He smells. Pulls off that. Pulls up the Darkwing hat. Discovers it's launch pad. He he's still wearing his flight cap. Yeah, he he's upset. He can't get another potion. Granny said this was the only one you're getting. Mm -hmm. And he thinks he completely wasted his time until he realizes now he can actually have launch pad frame Darkwing. Yeah. So he sends launch pad up to the surface. And Launchpad starts committing crimes. Yep. And Dan Ga uh, Gander is all over it. <laughs> yeah. And during the scene, Launchpad gets an I am the terror entrance. Mm -hmm. But he says, I am the error that flaps in the night. Launchpad <laughs> cannot do these entrances. Oh, no. He also says, I am the surcharge that triples your bill. Which, <laughs> I don't like those. And so Launchpad uh, robs an armored bank truck. He steals and candy from a baby. <laughs> steals candy from a baby. I think he robs an old lady, too. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We don't get Tom Lockjaw again. We get Dan Gander. Yeah, he's it's Dan Gander this whole episode because he pops back up later on. Mm. I guess it was made early enough that they hadn't settled on it being Tom Lockjaw yet, which makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I like Tom Lockjaw. I know you and, do. <laughs> and it's on the it's on the rate it's, so it's on television. Darkwing's mad because he's ruining his reputation. One thing I noticed that's really odd. Dark, Darkwing mentions that his stellar career is getting ruined, and he and he goes over to a trophy case. Mm -hmm. Why does he have trophies? I have no idea. <laughs> like the whole the whole deal with Darkwing is he, he's not a respected superhero. Mm -hmm. Where the trophy case come from? Is he buying his own trophies to make get... himself feel better? I guess as an adult, you would catch on to that. But I think as a kid, like, whoa, look at Darkwing, you know. Oh, a kid wouldn't care. Yeah, he's heavily decorated, you know. <laughs> yeah, but as an adult, I'm like, that's not Darkwing Duck. Who gives Darkwing Duck trophies? <laughs> not when Gizmo Duck exists. Yeah. But uh, he, he finishes a punchline, though, with, with a picture, a big metaphor here, man. Yeah, he says, you know, he's been, and then he, he I think he, I think he punches the wall, and a, a picture frame hits him, and he goes, I've been framed. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, big and, pun uh, there. That's Darkwing Duck for you. Yeah. And so Darkwing, you know, he meets up with Launchpad. He does meet <laughs> meet up with him on the, the rack bank. after, at the bank. Launchpad's <laughs> holding on to a couple of money sacks. And then Jambalaya Jake and Gumbo just walk into the shot. Yep. And um, 
So Jake six launch pad on Darkwing, and launch pad pulls off double reverse pedal drop boom boom kick. He pulled it off finally. <laughs> well, he's hypnotized. He thinks he's Darkwing. Mm-hmm. And um, before Jake can do much, the police show up, and Darkwing gets arrested. This is the third time, right? Second, third? Right. At this point, this is the third time he's been arrested. The other two, if you're keeping score, were Darkly Dawn's the Duck Part 2 and Easy Come, Easy Grows. That's right. So it is the third, yep. And it's the same cop from Easy Come, Easy Grows. But he always has a different voice. <laughs> different voice. He has, a, he has a very stereotypical Irish accent. Mm-hmm. And so Darkwing goes to jail. Um, I really think a lot of this episode, not that alternate sequence, was really rushed. Because there's this weird line Darkwing has when he they pull up to the jail. And Darkwing says, now I know what they mean by the long arm of the law. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're setting up a visual gag with his arm being stretched out or something like that. And there's no gag. Yeah. He says it, but there's like no visual to go with it. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Mm-hmm. So anyway, whatever. Darkwing is thrown in jail. And this is my favorite scene in the episode. Oh, uh, when he's with the inmate? When he's with the inmate. Okay. Okay, so the inmate makes this comment about Darkwing um, had a racket this whole time. He was probably on the take. Mm-hmm. And Darkwing's like, no, I would never do that. And Darkwing tells the inmate that he was uh, framed. He's perfectly innocent. Mm-hmm. And the inmate acts shocked. <laughs> he's being sarcastic of course yeah and he goes hey everybody this guy's framed and my favorite line of the episode you don't see it there's a convict in the background who laughs hey what a kawinky dink i was framed too you know <laughs> <laughs> my favorite line of the episode it actually makes me laugh out loud um but then we meet the prison warden rupert mm-hmm. what's what species is this guy he's a pig he's a pig um, and he tells them if they don't listen, they'll go to the box. Yeah, and the inmate uh, warns them, you don't want to get sent to the box. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess with Rupert. Yep. And, um, the head of Darkwing's hammer, because they're cracking, they're cracking rocks like a chain gang. And, um, the head of the hammer flies off and hits Rupert, so Darkwing's got to go over to the box. Yeah. And the box is basically like a jack-in-the-box, right? Yeah, but no paddywhack. No paddywhack, nope. Darkwing just pops out of the box. <laughs> it's a little box, though. It's really tiny. <laughs> and just in case we forget what the villains are doing, we have a completely pointless scene where Jake goes back to his sewer shanty and Grammy Whammy shows up in a, in smoke and reminds him he has to give her $10,000. It's this really short scene. Yeah. I guess just to remind us what Jake's doing. And mm-hmm. it's it's not important. But then we go back to the, uh, we go back to the prison. And Darkwing's digging a tunnel. Digging in the tunnel with a spoon. Under the sink. <laughs> Under the sink. So here we get an interesting reference here. Mm-hmm. So the Darkwing is trying to sneak out, and they got spotlights on him. They catch him. He reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out sand. And what does he do? He starts dancing. This dance. If you guys are wa- have ever watched this scene, and that dance looks familiar, it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. The animation is copied from a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Will, have you ever seen Showbiz Bugs, the cartoon where Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck are on stage, and every time Daff- Daffy dances, nobody applauds, but no matter yeah. what Bugs does, everyone goes crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Daffy does this uh, dance. Darkwing does the exact same dance. It's animated the exact same way. They, they copy the animation. <laughs> So that yeah, it's funny. I don't know if it's a reference or someone just got someone just got lazy and copied it, mm-hmm. or maybe it was just like it looked, you know, it was whatever. Darkwing dances, and for some reason it works. They let him go, which doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like if it was like a if it was more of a stupider show, I would get the joke. But I feel like there should be a little bit more reality here. Like they shouldn't let him just walk out of the prison. And give him roses on the they, way out. They give him roses. Darkwing <laughs> Duck escapes prison by doing a dance. Yep. Mm, walks no. right out. He just Walk. walks right. He walks right out. <laughs> um. So then Darkwing shows up at this in the sewers. That's mm-hmm. right. Both Jumbalaya Jake episodes have a climax in the sewers. How original. Um. He does get a line. He does get an entrance line. 
I am the current of vengeance gurgling through your sewer. Mm -hmm. And Gumbo is grossed out by that. Yep. Oh, it doesn't seem that gross, but okay. And um, so Darkwing tangles a little bit with Jake, a little bit with Launchpad. And then who shows up? Granny. Granny, and she turns Jake into a... Frog. Frog. And Jake's like, no, 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 Granny, I have your money. Just turn me back and I'll get it. He tries to, he tries to trick her. He gives her a bag full of, she says, possum feet and beaver innards or something like that. Is that what, that what it was? I don't know. I know she says possum feet. Mm -hmm. And just as she's about to really lose her temper, Gumbo just hands her a wad of cash. Yeah. And Jake's mad. He's, he finds out Gumbo was holding out on him. You've been holding out on old Jake? And then, <laughs> and then Gumbo goes, oh, yeah. But Granny's I, not happy, though. <laughs> I think that, by the way, I think that, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Jim. <laughs> and they use that same thing in Ghoul of My Dreams when uh, Morgana kisses Darkwing. Just that deep, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Granny says, um, yeah, your gator's smart enough to save his own skin. Mm -hmm. and, but she's going to leave. She's not going to punish Jake because she knows that when she leaves and she cancels that hex, Jake's getting his butt kicked. Yeah, so she removes the hex from Launchpad. Mm -hmm. And Launchpad gets to say, let's get dangerous. Is that the only time he ever says it? I don't remember him saying it again. I think I think he said it before. I just don't remember. Okay. I, I don't think this is the only time he says it. Mm -hmm. And um, so they corner Jake and Gumbo on both sides of a pipe. And Darkwing, tell, Darkwing tells uh, Launchpad to do the double reverse paddle drop boom boom kick. <laughs> which is copyrighted by the way and he has two patents <laughs> and um and it gets kind of corny here like launch pads like i can't do it and, no he goes i said it and darkman goes and you can do it too launch pad the ability is inside of you if you only believe in yourself it's like that's a little corny yeah. <laughs> but anyway launch pad tries to do it doesn't work darkman does it kicks it them you know, he, he gets rid of jake jake and gumbo are gone and um and launchpad's like but i thought you told me it was inside of myself if i just believed and darkwing's like oh it's probably just deeper than i thought yeah <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and um so how, what does he do to jake and gumbo uh well we he doesn't do it right away because we get don uh what's it, dan ganders dan gander yes that's yeah true. yeah he he's reporting that we're about to find out darkwing's identity mm-hmm Mm -hmm. But instead of finding out who uh, Darkwing's uh, identity, yeah. we got J Gumbo and Jake. They've been apprehended. And they're dressed as Darkwing. They're both wearing the outfits. And <laughs> Dan Gander calls Gumbo Dumbo. <laughs> yeah. So basically, Darkwing just pretty much framed them back. <laughs> yeah, you got to even. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so Darkwing tells Launchpad, you know, we saved the day. But the, you know, and our reputations are secure. But the bad news is. We got to sew new uniforms. <laughs> yep. So you, you see the two of them in long johns by a sewing machine. <laughs> he's like, we have some sewing to do. And yeah. we end on this really weird drawing of Launchpad shrugging his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a really bad drawing. It's like, ugh, okay. Um, but anyway, that's what I mean when I say this this studio, Hanho uh, Huang Up, starts off strong and they just kind of fall apart. But. Yeah, that's that's double dark wings. Um what do you like about the episode, Will? Um I guess I, I like Dan Gather uh Gander. Is it Gander Ganders? Yeah, I think Dan it's Dan Gander, Ga yeah, Gander. Because yeah. a Gander's like a duck. Yeah, I, I like him in it because the way he's reporting is funny because like as he's re reporting it is actually happening, you know? Mm -hmm. I liked him. Um I believe that first cop, the one with the Irish accent, I think that was Neil Ross. Yeah, Neil's in the credits, but I can't find anything that specifically says who he's playing. Mm -hmm. But you did say it sounds like him, so it probably is. Yeah, um, I like that term, that uh, double reverse paddle drop boom boom kick. I'm trying here, man. I'm fishing here for things I like about the episode of... I guess that's about it, man. It's not an episode I like at all, man. Yeah, I like the stuff in the jail. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. With the, with the convict going, what a quinky dink. Mm -hmm. um, I like that stuff. 
But it's like, watching this episode makes me realize the only reason I really like Can't Buy You Love is because it was animated in Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm, I'm confident that's the only reason I really like that episode. Because this one... It's Granny's much, okay. It, Granny's Granny, okay. I like Gumbo. I don't care for Jake, though. But even Gumbo, like, he had that shtick in the first episode where he would d- daintily eat the brownies and pull up the table with the candelabra. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even do stuff like that here. Nah. Like, he's just an alligator. He doesn't have that same personality. And Jake does not seem nearly as competent and threatening as he was in that last episode. Yeah. Like, he he beat up Darkman good in that one. This one, he's just a wuss. Yeah, this one, he feared him a lot, and he really depended on Granny. Without yeah. Granny, yeah, he 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 was he was pretty much useless without Granny. Where the other one, he just was not backing down. He was letting him know it's on, let's go. Yeah, so I can appreciate that first episode. Mm-hmm. This one, it's just you see why they didn't go back to him. It's like, and I said this, I think at the end of the last episode, this one was voted the worst Darkwing episode of all time, oh, just wow. based just based on the IMDb ratings. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm not going to argue that. <laughs> I, right. I, know, I know people don't like it. It's a hard one to get through, especially coming off all the great ones we just reviewed. Yeah, so how many gas gun canisters are you giving this one? I really can't think of many below this one, mm-hmm. honestly. So I'm going to give it a one. Okay. It's, it's saved by a couple of things I do enjoy, mm-hmm. but it's not very good. I'm going to give it a one also. Um, I felt like the things that I, I, I wanted to give it to help it, like give it a one and a half and stuff, like the, the few things I did enjoy about it. But the things that are so bad about it, like the scenes that don't make sense, like him walking out of the prison, uh, the, the telephone scene. Um, I didn't really get the whole the, the telephone booth. We didn't mention it, but the, remember when the telephone booth flew out the sky and stuff? Yeah, I, d- I did mention that, but it's mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. So, And there's no mention of Gauze. There's no mention of Honker. Uh, I don't know, man. This is just not an episode for me. Granny, she's okay. You know what I'm saying? I, ca- I wish I, we would have seen a little more of her. Maybe it would have helped it a little bit, but not, it, she couldn't save it. I'll tell you that much. I do like that one shot toward the end where Granny's threatening Jake. And they, like, pan down her arm on a close-up of her disgusting fingernail. Mm-hmm. I think that was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, Granny's okay, though. I think the voice work really helps with her. Yeah. She's all right, but she's nothing special either. Mm-hmm. She's Jambalaya Jake and Drag, basically. <laughs> you know, it's... it's Okay, well, eh. we don't... <laughs> well, we, okay, we, we don't have a villain to rate this time. No, we don't. Okay, so what episode we got next? What up next? Oh, so we're back in ABC territory. Saturday oh, morning. All right. I like those Saturday mornings ones so far. Well, this one isn't as good as Negaduck or Fungus Among Us. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we have a couple coming up that aren't as good. But this one is – It this next one is fun. Definitely much better than this one. It's um Slaves to Fashion, another Tuscanini episode. Yeah, that was decent. Yeah, because we got Gaz, we got Honker and Tank. And, you know, the biggest role for Binky so far. Mm-hmm. So it's a fun episode. It's actually not. I think it's kind of underrated. So we'll talk about Slaves to Fashion Mm -hmm. uh, next week. Okay. All right, Mike. Yeah. So we got this one behind us. Okay. You know know what? I'm going to say, though, I hate being negative, this negative about Darkwing episodes because I love the show so much. But I'm also going to call a spade a spade when the episodes aren't very good. Yeah, it is what it is, man. And I, I can't pretend this one's a good episode. I just can't. I got one episode that I don't like that I'm going to try to defend, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. I still got time to do it, uh, plan for it, but mm-hmm. you already know which episode it is. But Yeah. <laughs> so no I'm problem. Yeah. But we're, we're getting better than this for a little bit. And so that's it. That's, that's Double Dark Wings. Yeah, well, we got no shout outs here. He already name dropped us on uh, where you can find us at. Uh, guys, keep uh, tuning into the YouTube channel. I've been dropping commercials and promos every wednesday so i'm trying my best to keep that going for a while yeah you've been putting up some cool stuff yeah and uh you know i think we found our new slot for flash quacks we're gonna try our best to keep them on on a friday you know we're still gonna try to stick to just one a month but sometimes you might luck up and get two 
three might be pushing it, but you might get it. Yeah, and we got our um, Neil Ross interview dropping in oh, a few yeah. days for the Flash mm-hmm. Quack. Mm-hmm. This for this Friday coming up with the Neil Ross interview that we mentioned a while back. So you guys enjoy that one. Yeah, and we got a new series we're going to drop on YouTube, but shh, we can't tell you yet. <laughs> no, we have, we have plans. We have other plans. Oh, yeah. So that said, let's just wrap this up. All right, and guys, stay dangerous. Yep, do some pedal reverse double. Ah, I can't even say it. See, I du- can't say it. Uh, double reverse paddle. Paddle drop. Boom, 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 boom kick. kick. There we go. Thank you, Will. So everyone have a good night. Good night, y'all. <laughs>